the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam and the tough diplomatic battle surrounding it. Ethiopia is a country endowed with the potential to produce up to 45,000 megawatts of renewable energy. Yet it is still in a miserable state as no less than 56% of its population lacks access to electricity. As one of the nations in the world with acute electricity shortage, Ethiopia launched the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam GERD in 2011. The GERD is meant to snap the country out of poverty by raising its electricity supply by 150%. However, the construction of what is expected to be Africa's biggest dam upon completion was anything but a smooth sailing. Ethiopia has made it abundantly clear that the dam's development is crucial for the country's economic development and to overcome poverty and famine. Ethiopia has been building a reservoir to store water that will generate electricity. GERD is actually a people's project, a dam that is expected to bring light to millions who are currently living under darkness. Ethiopia has also told the whole world in no uncertain terms that the billion dollar dam is based on the principle of equitable utilization of the Nile waters and that it will not cause any significant harm on other riparian countries. Ethiopia has no intention whatsoever to reduce the volume of water going to the downstream states of Egypt and Sudan. Growing disputes over the GERD led to the establishment of a legal technical committee meant to look into impacts of the GERD on the lower riparian countries. Armed with negative thoughts about the dam right from the start, Egypt left no stone unturned. Its disruptive stance causing trilateral negotiations to end in a deadlock. That explains why Egypt insisted on the establishment of an international panel of experts to scrutinize the impact, if any, of the GERD on the two downstream countries. Determined to interrupt the construction at any cost, Egypt, unsurprisingly, rejected the findings of the panel since it did not match its expectations. All the while, Ethiopia clarified its unwavering commitment for a negotiated settlement to the dispute, adding it doesn't have any plan to harm any of the Nile downstream riparian countries and has been strictly governed by the tripartite agreement. In fact, Egypt and Sudan stand to benefit from the dam as it helps to regulate the flow of water during the rainy season. Egypt did not budge, all the while doing its utmost to take the case to the UN Security Council. Ethiopia and Egypt sat for a lengthy talk on the long-running dispute over the dam on the sidelines of the UN Security Council meeting in New York in September 2014, agreeing to continue the tripartite talks. Subsequently, the foreign ministers of the three countries met in Cairo, Khartoum and Addis Ababa, while technical experts appointed from the three countries met regularly. However, Egypt's inconsistent demands rendered the repeated discussions fruitless. Ethiopia has all the while been insisting that the dam is meant to cement cooperation between riparian countries and that it causes no significant harm to downstream countries. The downstream countries, especially Egypt, has lent deaf ears to pleas from Ethiopia and applied all the pressures it could to obstruct the construction of the dam. On one hand, Ethiopia has never ceased 
to lay bare Egypt's conspiracy to the whole world via diplomatic efforts. All the while, however, Ethiopia has never even for a second stopped the construction of the colossal dam. In 2015, the leaders of the three countries signed the Declaration of Principles. The three nations agreed to hire a group of consultants who will report to the panel of experts on fair and equitable use of the Nile waters. However, this initiative too fell flat when the impartiality of the group of consultants hired to report to the panel of experts was questioned. Between the ups and downs of the long lingering controversy over the dam, Ethiopia underwent a political reform beginning 2018, finding the opportunity to rectify problems associated with the administration of the GERD. After cleaning the mess in its backyard, Ethiopia made vigorous efforts to continue the tripartite negotiations as well as the joint consultation between the ministers of water and foreign affairs of the three countries. Egypt requested that other foreign bodies, including the World Bank, be appointed as mediators. Ethiopia, on the other hand, rejected Egypt's request since it clearly went against the cardinal principle of African solutions to African problems. Ethiopia has reiterated that it only plans to bring equitable share of the waters of the Nile and that bringing light to its 56% of citizens living in the dark remains a topmost priority. When he sat at the helm of power in Ethiopia, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed assured Cairo during his first visit to the country that the dam will by no means reduce the water level in Egypt. Egypt, however, said that the Nile issue is its political center of gravity and that it will not sign the dam's water filling agreement. In 2020, the United States issued a first statement regarding the dam. And Egypt, which has always been at the forefront of efforts to involve Western powers into the negotiations, did not hesitate to formally request that the United States be appointed as mediator in GERD negotiations. Ethiopia rejected the request from Egypt. Months later, the dam negotiations were held in Washington, D.C., under the supervision of the U.S. and the World Bank. While the negotiations dragged on with deadlocks and impasses characterizing them, Egypt's desire was to disrupt and hinder the water filling of the Gerd's reservoir. As negotiations stumbled, Ethiopia, which never compromised on the construction of the dam, while remaining committed to a diplomatic settlement, completed the water filling of the dam in July 2020 before the end of its rainy season. The first round of water filling, unlike the complaints by Egypt, proved that the dam will not harm the downstream nations. Clearly growing resentful of Ethiopia's initiative to erect a dam on the Nile, and frustrated by the first stage filling of the GERD, Egypt took the dam issue to the floor of the United Nations Security Council. Its efforts to stop the construction or water filling, however, failed to materialize as Ethiopia remained adamant. In July 2021, Ethiopia completed the second round of water filling in the same way running its work on the GERD parallel with the struggle in the diplomatic arena. By the fall of 2021, the dam started generating power with two turbines, which revealed to the rest of the world that Ethiopia's plans on the Nile are in fact irreversible. In line with Ethiopia's promise to the world 
neither the water filling nor the power generation of the dam caused any significant harm on the downstream countries of the Nile Basin.